Hello everyone, welcome to A plus B I. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting trigonometric equation with I or the imaginary unit. I say we're going to be solving it. How many solutions are there? Are there any solutions? Can there be infinitely many? We'll find out. Okay, so to be able to solve this problem I can think of three different methods and I'm going to be presenting all of them and you kind of get to decide uh, which one is your favorite. Let us know in the comment section down below. First method, and I'm not necessarily saying that all these methods are conclusive, but we're, we'll make an attempt. So I noticed that we have one plus sine theta in the denominator, which kind of prompts me to multiply it by one minus sine theta, which is its conjugate, right? And when you multiply those two things, you know that from difference of two squares, we get something nice, right? So let's go ahead and write it down. This, this gives us 1 minus sine squared, which is cosine squared theta. And of course, we can go ahead and cancel out one of these cosines with this one, and we end up with something like 1 minus sine theta divided by cosine theta. By the way, if you're proving or verifying identities in trigonometry, you would do something like this whenever you see an expression like that. So it's pretty automatic. But this being equal to i is almost like no different from the original equation, right? So that doesn't really help, does it? I don't think so. So this will be inconclusive, too bad, right? But let's go ahead and take a look at the second method because I think the second method is pretty interesting and my favorite always is either the second or the third. So let's rewrite our problem, but this time let's go ahead and do give it a little twist. So we have cosine theta over one plus sine theta equals i. And I want to be able to separate this into two trigonometric functions, okay? I'm going to use a little bit of geometry here. So for geometry lovers, yay, this is going to be a good thing. Let's flip this. That gives us 1 plus sine theta divided by cosine theta is 1 over i. But you should know that the reciprocal of i is negative i, which is also its complex conjugate, right? Because its modulus is 1, that's why. So... At this point, we're not going to just, you know, do the same thing, multiply by the whatever the conjugate. Instead, we're going to do this. We're going to separate them. That was the whole purpose. So I'm going to write this as 1 over cosine theta plus sine theta over cosine theta equals negative i. As you know, 1 over cosine theta is secant theta. You can either write it like that. It's totally up to you or leave it like this, one over cosine, doesn't matter. And this is tangent theta. At this point, I thought about squaring both sides, which may or may not help because secant squared is one plus tangent squared. And from there, we might get something interesting, but I haven't tried it. I took a different approach, which I'm gonna show you. But if you go ahead and try squaring both sides at this point, let us know what you find, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do instead. I'm gonna draw a right triangle. Remember I told you I was gonna use geometry. So here, here's a right triangle uh, where theta is one of the angles, obviously. And remember, uh, we can name these A, B, C. I'm not going to get into the I stuff, but we have secant theta. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine, which is B over C. So it's C over B. I'm going to write it that way. And tangent is A over B. Now we already knew that, and I could probably take it from here. It will be the same. I don't know why I separated it. Well, too bad. You could just take it from there. And this is equal to negative i. So what is so significant about it, right? <laughs> Not really, unless you make a common denominator and cross multiply. That's the fun part. If you do that, you're gonna get a plus c equals negative ib. You could also write this as negative bi, no big deal. Now this is when we square both sides, which is gonna give us a lot of good information. When we square both sides, we gotta be careful. Left-hand side is a squared plus c squared plus 2ac. And right hand side is i squared is negative one. Remember that, did I tell you? If you know, don't know that, go ahead and check out the lecture videos. I also have another channel, CyberMath, Cyber with an S. Go ahead and check it out if you like algebra number theory and trigonometry problems like this one. So we square the left hand side and right hand side, i squared is negative one. So because i is the square root of negative one, you should memorize that for sure. And this will give us negative b squared. Now, here's what's interesting about it. We have a right triangle, so we can use the Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared is C squared. Great. Can we use that information in our expression? Probably. Let's bring the B over here. A squared plus B squared plus C squared plus 2AC equals 0. 
What an interesting equation, right? Now we do know that a squared plus b squared is c squared. So we can go ahead and replace this with c squared. And then another c squared, that'll give us 2c squared. 2c or not 2c. Do you see what I'm, what I'm seeing? Hopefully. Now we can go ahead and factor out a 2c. That gives us c plus a equals 0. Now this has interesting implications. Now this is really cool. You know why? Because either c is 0, which is not good because you have a triangle whose hypotenuse is 0 units. Uh-oh. That's not good. And remember, in our equation, we have cosine and sine. If C is zero, the hypotenuse is zero, both sine and cosine are gonna be undefined. So this is not good, forget about it. What about this one? That means C plus A or A plus C is equal to zero or C equals negative A. Is that acceptable? Let's find out. Redraw the triangle, A, B, C, and this is my theta. So notice that sine theta is A over C. If C is negative A, this is A over negative A, which is negative 1. So what? Right? Big deal. Well, if sine theta is negative 1, think about the unit circle. Sine is 0 at 0 and pi, right? And it is 1 here and it's negative 1 here. Okay, make a bigger dot, right? Obviously, this is what we're looking for. Uh-oh, that is 3 pi over 2. And if theta is 3 pi over 2, that's not good. Wait a minute. Why is it not good? Because if you think about, think back to the original problem, if sine theta is negative one, uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem. The denominator is zero and that's not acceptable. So there are no solutions at this point. All right, great. Let's go ahead and do you have patience for the third method? You should stick around and we're gonna go through the third way of doing things, which is again, my favorite. And you'll understand why, but again, I'm biased, so you get to choose, okay? So one more time, the original problem is cosine theta divided by one plus sine theta, and that's equal to i. And guess what? We've done similar problems before. Go ahead and check them out, and I'll try to include a link to them, maybe even make one day. We can make a playlist of trigonometric complex problems. So what are we gonna do? What didn't we do so far? Cross multiplication, right? Didn't you think about it? Let's go ahead and cross multiply. That gives us cosine theta equals i plus i sine theta. That should be familiar to you. If you know Euler or Euler's form formula, which is the most beautiful equation in math, you should definitely know this because Euler is the best. Cosine theta minus i sine theta equals i. What does the left-hand side look like? Well, Euler said if you have cosine theta plus i sine theta, it is equal to e to the power i theta. Such a beautiful equation, right? But we have a minus sign. Don't worry, sign is odd. So we can just make it absorb uh, by choosing negative theta. So if you make the theta, change it into negative theta, this will work because cosine negative theta is still cosine theta. You get the idea? So the left-hand side is e to the power negative i theta. And the right-hand side is i in the argand plane, which is a fancy name for the coordinate system. Uh, it is i. X and its argument is pi over 2. So you can kind of write it like this. And from here, you get theta equals negative pi over 2. Uh-oh, Houston, we have a problem again because negative pi over 2 is the same as 3 pi over 2, sort of. So 1 plus sine theta is 0 again, and we have an undefined expression. Too bad. No solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out Cyber Math and A plus BI and bye bye.